we go. Okay, uh, so uh, we got a considerably smaller list this week. We didn't want to bombard you like we did last week, uh, but we got some uh, stuff that uh, is is coming online. So some exciting things we wanted to talk about. So Daraville Cool Splash, we've been out of this one for a little while. Um, you can see here how great the plan is. Nice color. Um, this was actually uh, some uh, material that uh, some liners we brought in this spring. Um, Kind of out of sequence to help uh, fill the line and the guys did a great job getting them finished off uh, so uh, we can jump into it with 300 and then uh, we'll be able to to add add some more i think there's like 800 in this group and then the uh, standard willoway production will be a little bit later but uh you know, great plant Daravilla, um definitely is a plant that they talk about deer resistance um you know it's a native in most of our areas so they're really considered a native uh, fairly tough plant, um, so it can it can be adaptable, but uh, th those are some of the, the great things about it. Cool Splash is probably one of the first uh, name varieties to come through. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, um, but it's uh, they uh, reinvigorated it a few years ago, cleaned up the breeding a little bit, um, and uh, in the first edition program. So we're looking real good with that variegation. Next uh, shouldn't be uh, one that anybody. Doesn't know by now, I would think, Carl Forster. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move into this crop here. Now we were shipping some material that was blooming, okay? Um, these are a little younger, so they're not blooming yet. The roots look great, I, the, the head of the plant looks great, um, but okay, we gotta communicate that, you know, if they got some plants a week or two ago, those were blooming where these have not scaped. A lot of times, in their first season, when we shift them, they won't scape uh, because they're out of sequence. Uh, so if you do get a question on that, they will definitely uh, run their scapes up next year. But right now they're naturally, they're fully scaped and they're actually starting to kind of go downhill a little bit. Uh, I know a lot of people trim that out and, and let them re-break in the landscape so they look a little fresher. but. They scape up and then just like any grass that those stalks start to die and release the seeds, uh, which in this case, uh, these are fairly sterile. So they don't really spread from seed that much. So uh, that's just kind of on that. We've run into that issue before where we've had that question, why are they not in bloom? We're pretty much past the bloom time for this one. And it's more about the foliage. Um, it's, it's really grown more as a, as a foliage plant um, so that's what we have. All right, uh, lightning strike uh, is also a Calamagrasis type. So uh, both of these are considered natives. Um, very tough, very adaptable grass, widely used. Lightning strike, we, we used to grow, uh, what was that one, variegated one? Um, but avalanche, we used to grow avalanche that had a little bit of variegation. Uh, the variegation wasn't that great. That's why we went to lightning strike. You can see there way better variegation. I know there are people that still probably request avalanche or still grow it and offer it. We decided not to because the variegation was intermittent and it wasn't that great. Here with lightning strike, you get the variegation, you keep it all year. Uh, that really makes for an interesting plant. And then you get the toughness of a Calamagrasis. Can go way north with this one. Uh, can handle uh, very tough environments. This is this is a plant that can go in the best garden, and it can also go in in the parking lot of a Walmart. So uh, it can go anywhere and do very well. So, uh, but uh, make sure uh, we talk about this lightning strike. Okay, uh, next is uh, you know an oak leaf hydrangea. Uh, we do grow one up here. Uh, it's in a seven gallon. Jeff uh, has has the Alice three gallons at Avon, but we do the seven. We wanted to show you here we're in full blown flower mode. Um, you know these are pretty much one shot wonders. So they're they're going to bloom. They're going to look great uh, over the next three three weeks or so. And still the bloom has interest. It's it dries. It doesn't like rot out. It, it kind of dries on there. So it, it, it kind of has a, you know, a nice dry flower. It, it'll dry brown. It has no color to it when it dries. Uh, but really, um, 
I think oak leaf hydrangeas are, are mostly grown for, for the leaves. You can see there we got great clean leaves all the way down. That can sometimes be difficult with these, uh, but we do grow them under high tunnel. We do a lot of extra work with them to try to keep that foliage clean all year. So got a great looking plant. We only have 100 of them, but uh, this would be definitely one for the wholesaler landscaper. Uh, Physocarpa festivus gold. Um, these are just coming on, so don't oversell the size. Um, Cheryl, how tall you think these are? Yeah. About 15. 15. Yeah, so they're about 15 inches tall, but definitely spreading over the pot. Yeah. Nice, good colored growth, clean foliage. That's why we decided to put them on. Um, you know, we don't really have a height spec, but, uh, you know, you can see there are the multiple breaks. It's well rooted. Everything's right with this thing. So we decided to go ahead and move them on. Uh, it'll continue to push out. Just be careful if you got somebody buying on height specs. I, I don't know why they would, but there are always people that do that. Don't get yourself caught on that. Um, but you can see here, uh, it is an upright grower. Okay, so it'll continue to grow upright. Um, it is not a dwarf by any means. Uh, it, it will get pretty big, probably not as big as summer wine. But uh, it'll get up there, but uh, great looking plants. That's why we wanted to get them on. Ginger wine, um, you know, this is uh, kind of, it's one of those, I, I guess we got to have all color for everybody. Everybody's got to have a little bit a different shade. Ginger wine is really getting popular out there. Um, I like this over like Coppertina is one that's been out there for a while. There's there's a couple other ones that are older that uh, have kind of those different shades of oranges and reds in them. Um, ginger wine I like because it is really good with uh, resistance to mildews and bacterial spotting, things like that, where some of the older ones have trouble with that. Uh, you can see here, it's uh, a little bit more of an open grower. It's not as a com as compact of a grower, uh, but a great grower, good stiff stems. It will continue to to grow up and uh, you got the great variations of color on the leaves. Uh, another FISO is Little Devil. This is the uh, day for FISO Carpa because we've been out of them for a while. So we really wanted to, to show you these. So this is Little Devil, we got 400 of them going on. <clears throat> So the two uh, dwarf kind of compact ones we do are Tiny Wine and Little Devil, very close in their growth. Um, I'm probably splitting hairs when I say Tiny Wine is a little bit more smaller. Uh, tiny Wine definitely has a little bit more smaller leaf, but it's still it's still an aggressive grower. It's it's not made for the little the little tiny herb garden kind of thing. It, it it still needs some room. Both of these do, but way more compact than like the straight ones like summer wine or diablo or any, any of those kinds so um you can see there great fresh growth on that full all the way down no leaf issues great plant to talk about so uh next uh pjm we're starting to get back in the pjm business here so this is uh you know landscape staple um so uh you know i, I would say this is just going to be exclusive to the Landscape uh, re wholesaler, um, not so much the garden center. So you can see there good fresh growth. Uh, PJMs are early, early spring bloomers. Uh, one of the first, you know, ericaceous type rhododendron azalea to, to bloom. Um, so we're well past that. It, it only blooms once a year. Um, we, you know, after the bloom, we trimmed it, we repopped the growth. You can see there we got great size. Um, Cheryl was able to get 300 of them on as they continue to go. We got 2000 in this group. So we basically over just a couple of short years, we went from, I don't know, we were only doing like 500. Now we're up to 2000 because we really see the opportunity in that market. Also, the three gallon crop is, uh, coming along. I really expect to be showing you those next week. They're not going to be ready for shipping next week though. It'll be the week after. But uh, they're starting to turn on. Um, we've had them in threes, limited numbers, but we're going to be able to put big numbers on uh, next week for for the weeks after that for shipping. So, uh, Salix uh, Flamingo, 
Um, so uh, we've talked about this one, kind of blended in with the gravel. Cheryl, you, you need to take photo lessons from somebody. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, flamingo has a little bit smaller leaf than Hikiro Nishiki. It tends to to hold that that white color better throughout the heat, where sometimes Hikiro Nishiki can almost turn all green for a certain period, um, especially as we get into summer. Uh, Hikiro Nishiki really shines, you know, early spring. They still look good. We have them on now. They still got great variegation, but you definitely start to lose those pinks for sure as the heat comes on. And, and Flamingo is going to do the same thing. It's, it's going to tend to lose the, the pinky colors in there as the foliage gets older and as it starts slowing down. But we still got, you know, several weeks of great color on these. Just be aware of that. Um, we'll keep showing you photos of these. If, if we really see the color start to change, we'll make sure you show, show you a photo. But that's naturally how this thing, how this thing works. So that's something we have to we have to be conscious of, and if we get questions, uh, we need to be able to talk about that. Uh, what's next? So, no, Spiria. Uh, so we got uh, Spiria Magic Carpet. This is another one we were out of. Um, so Magic Carpet's kind of in the old standards. It's probably one of the last ones that kind of hit the market before all the program stuff started to hit with, you know, first edition and proven winners and bloom and easy and all that. But uh, this one's a great one. We still continue to do it. Um, a lot of landscapers like it a little bit cheaper than a, than a, a program one, <clears throat> but it has great college color and it also has a really good foliage and it has great contrast to the foliage. So it's going to have those light greens to yellow and then the new growths are going to come out as red. Uh, also has a, a you know a red flower bloom so great plants kind of short uh, more of the lower grower I wouldn't call it a dwarf uh, because you know it'll spread pretty good um, bigger than a little princess maybe um, but uh, it, it's not as big as like a doozy or something like that so Spirea gold mound this is another one that's kind of a landscape staple um, you know the, these these plants look fantastic right now look at that color in there no leaf issue, full of buds. Uh, these things uh, were another liner that we brought in out of sequence, so we would have something for, for uh, really for uh, July, but uh, they're finishing earlier than I thought they would, which is great. So uh, we're going to have a nice fresh plant where some of them out there are getting a little tired, and we had to trim them back. Um, you know, uh, double play gold is is very similar. Double play gold was selected because. Uh, it has uh, a little bit better repeat blooming power and a little bit better resistance to uh, bacterial spotting. But uh, if you can treat the gold mounds right, we can we can keep that bacterial spotting down, which you can see here. Uh, and I think the last one is Syringa Bloomerang Dark Purple. So you can see there uh, just exploding with growth. Um, these we actually shifted this spring, believe it or not. Uh, but they were a very big liner, um, so we took advantage of it, got them in, got them canned early, and uh, now they're ready to go. I would expect to start seeing a repeat bloom on these probably mid-July. Remember, with all of these repeat bloomers, it's never as heavy as its original bloom. So when it originally blooms in the spring, it's going to be heavy. You know, it's going to be loaded. Now it's going to, you know... Bloomerangs are, are repeat bloomers. It's really the Bloomerang series is really the only ones out there that do it. Um, and uh, you're going to get uh, flowers sporadically come through all through the season. But I would expect to start seeing some interest on these here in a couple of weeks where they start to set some some more flowers and start to bloom. Um, I usually notice a decent bloom sometime between July 15th and August 1. Um, and then uh, it'll be very light after that period. But it's it's a fragrant flower. It has summer interest to it. That's that, that's the whole thing about these bloomerangs is uh, it's repeat flower. It also is extremely adaptable. Uh, that's why um, 
you know, bloomerang is kind of gone. Now we're into dark purple, better color. Uh, it, it adapts way better to different conditions. Very tough plant can handle tougher soils can uh, can handle a little bit wetter, a little bit drier areas. It, it lilacs in general tend to like kind of a medium type of soil. Uh, they don't want to be in sand, but they don't want to be land and water either. So, um, you know, the extreme ends can be a little rough on lilacs, but uh, this one here can definitely be pushed to the far edges. So that's why we like it. One other plant that we didn't have in here that I wanted to make sure I mentioned was, you know, we've been we've been real limited with uh, spilled wine wygelia, and I know it's extremely popular right now. So we do have we have no threes currently. We will have threes. We will be back in business on threes in about two weeks. But in the meantime, we have some fantastic looking twos. Um, they're, they're definitely approaching the size of a three. They're not floppy. They look great. The foliage looks great. We just looked at them a, a, just a little bit ago before the meeting. And then we also have the deco pot. So we have that deco pot out there. Those look fantastic too. So you do have two options. So make sure you don't just look at that code of threes and go, oh, I don't have a three. Um, you, you know, you got some opportunity there, uh, to bridge the gap. So, uh, you know, and, and they're going to really get a head that's about the same size as a three, but they'll get it at the two gallon price. So sell a value. Um, they're not small twos. They're they're nice twos, but they're not overgrown either. So that they, they look great. You guys need another photo. We showed you the photo last week. Uh, it's in last week's, but I just wanted to bring it up because I know that's a very important plant right now. Quick note on hydrangeas. Hydrangeas we continue to. Evaluate. Sometimes they get a little floppy. They stretch. We have had extremely difficult weather to grow hydrangea paniculatus um, and arborescence, uh, but I think the guys are doing real good. The bobos look fantastic. Uh, we're in bobo business for the summer here, so we got a split trim. Uh, we've got lots of bobos out there that are flowered up. I'm sure that you've had a chance. You've, you've seen them in the dock. You saw them last week from the photos. And uh, we have thousands out there that we can continue to ship. And then the stuff that they trimmed, we'll be able to rotate into those. And, you know, you, you'll see a seamless transition. Limelights, we're still kind of struggling a little bit. We were able to pull some this week. We're going to have to back off again for next week. Uh, the one crop wanted to try to flop on us. So they're out there trimming. Uh, but then I got a crop that'll come online. So unfortunately, we'll, we'll be out of limelights next week, but then we'll be right back in them again. So communicate that, uh, you know, hopefully they can be patient, you know, our customers, uh, we will be right back in them. But if you got somebody that can take landscape grade, uh, we can always entertain that. They're just gonna get a plant that's trimmed, that's starting to flush out of the trim. So there, there are some options. Okay, 